more and more people building up their Jeeps with 40 inch tires and pushing them with the kind of big horsepower that you'd get with a Hemi or an LS. There's been a real demand for an axle that can handle the abuse. Dynatrack has the answer for it. The Pro Rock 80 with an 11 and a quarter inch ring gear, a two inch diameter pinion, 40 spline, 4340 full float shafts, and all packaged in a high clearance, lightweight, rigid housing, there really is nothing out there that comes even close to what you'll get with this axle. My name is Eddie with Way of Life, and in this video, you'll get to see exactly how it's made and right here in America. My name is Matt. I'm going to be building you guys a Furrock 80 rear. To start the build of a Dynatrack Pro Rock 80, a 4 inch quarter wall 4132 will need to be cut down to the appropriate length. Once cut, the tube will need to have both ends touched up and squared off. On the one end, the tube will get machined for fitment on the pumpkin. The other side of the tube will get faced off to length and bored out for the installation of the spindle. The bore will now be measured and checked against the sides of the spindle to ensure they're within spec and allow for a precise fit. The tube will then get prepped for welding by breaking the edge on the inside and chamfering the outside. With the tubes cut down, machined and ready for welding, it's time to have the specially made spindles pressed into them. Time to get them welded on. To finish up the tubes, the welds will need to get machined off and then set aside to cool off before proceeding to the next step. After orienting the tube so that it's properly set for pinion angle, the tubes are pressed into the housing. Using a mill, six holes will now be drilled on each side of the housing. These will later be filled in with rosette welds, which are needed to help prevent the slipping and spinning of the tubes. After setting the housing to account for pinion angle, additional holes are drilled into the tubes for the installation of vent hose connections. The axle is now moved over to a welding station where John will weld in all the brackets needed for a GJK Wrangler. Because this Pro Rock 80 will be used on JK with an Evo lever system, the brackets will only be tack welded in place. Rosette welds will now be filled into the holes that were previously drilled into the housing. With the Pro Rock 80 housing completed, it will now get washed and painted by Ashton before moving on to final assembly.
Steve will start the final assembly by preparing the ring and pinion for installation. To begin, a modification will need to be made to the locker to accommodate the ring gear being used. The pinion will also be modified for a precision fit. After cleaning up the locker and lining up the ring gear using two long bolts, heat is applied to the gear to help expand the metal and make it easier to drop in. The ring gear can now be secured to the locker. Air is applied to the locker to engage it and hold it in place as the carrier bolts are tightened to the appropriate torque setting. Dynatrack incorporates a special oiling system into the design of their ProRock differential housings, and one of the features include an additional oil fill port which is being added now. A port for the locker's airline will now be added as well. After cleaning out the inside of the housing, it's time to do an initial installation of the pinion. To get an idea of where everything sits, the ring gear will now be dropped into the differential housing. As you can see, the proprietary design of the ProRock 80 housing is extremely tight to maximize clearance. From here, different shims are added or removed until the proper amount of backlash is obtained. The bearing caps are now installed and the backlash is checked with a dial indicator. A marking compound is applied to three spots on the ring gear to help verify the wear pattern made as it rotates. After making additional adjustments, the airline and shims are installed before the bearings get pressed onto the carrier. Accounting for the new components, a new shim pack is assessed and installed onto the pinion before the bearing is pressed on and the race pounded in. After applying some grease to all the bearings, shims and shaft, the pinion is installed into the housing. The final check of the preload is done prior to moving on. The outboard shim and differential can now be reinstalled. The final check of the backlash is done to verify that it's still correct before the airline for the locker is routed. The airline is now connected to a bulkhead fitting and then a test is performed to ensure there are no leaks. Cap bolts can now be tightened to torque spec. Back at the pinion, a slinger and seal are added before the yoke is installed and secured in place with a pinion nut.
installation of a heavy duty dyno track cover, the assembly of the differential is now complete. Assembly of the hubs began with the races getting pressed into them. Next, the wheel studs will get pressed into the hubs as well. Time to pack the bearings with grease, as well as the hubs. The bearings will now be placed inside the hubs and have seals installed. Before the hubs can be installed onto the spindles, the emergency brake assembly will get bolted onto the axle housing. After applying some grease to the spindle, the hubs will get slipped onto it and secured in place. Rotors are added next, followed by the brake calipers. From here, all that's left is the installation of the axle shafts. With the installation of a breather fitting, the building of this Dynatrack Pro Rock 80 is now finished. If you would like more information regarding the Dynatrack Pro Rock 80 or the options that are available to you, visit their website at www.dynatrack.com.